Hey, Jeff Nelson of VetSource. I've been plant-based for almost 35 years. I put on a couple of dozen health conferences starting in 2001 with people like Dean Ornish, John McDougal, Caldwell Esselstyn, Neil Bernard, Alan Goldhammer, Joel Furman, and many other pioneers and experts in the plant-based world. And I've come to conclusions about what's most important, what works best, and what to focus on, and what you can safely ignore. I've read a lot of scientific papers, and I've consulted with my doctor and nutrition friends to make sure I'm understanding them and to be able to sniff out when a study is biased by the corporate source of the research who's just you know looking for marketing ideas to push their food product as opposed to real science. And so food company science is science that can be safely ignored or dismissed. And what I've seen is there are basically two schools of thought in the plant-based health world. And one school of thought, well, they treat nutrition as a zero-sum game. In this view, every bite, every supplement, every superfood is a move in on the health chessboard, the idea that you need a list of foods to eat. You need to think about how much you're getting of this nutrient or that healthy fat or this supplement and so on. Think of the daily dozen. The daily dozen. Or the nutritarian emphasis on eating gooms. G-bombs. Or certain foods regularly in order to be healthy. And if you don't follow these specific rules in order to get all the right uh, nutrients in exactly the right amounts, you're bound to lose. And it's a mindset of constant optimization. It's based on, I'm the expert. I I can determine what people uh, need. I read so you don't have to. I sell information for a living. Be sure to watch my next video so you're up to date. Or it's, you know, I sell the foods and the supplements that you need. So set up your auto ship in my store. And so you stack supplements and you track micronutrients and you adhere to a diet plan that you're promised is designed to maximize your lifespan. This approach often relies on research that conveniently aligns with companies selling the very supplements and food products that they advocate for, creating almost a cycle of dependency. And their message boils down to, if you don't do it our way, if you don't focus on what I'm telling you to focus on and coming back uh, next week to watch what else I'm now focusing on, well, you lose because health is a race and the winner is the one who gets the most perfect nutrients. Now, I don't buy into that view and I never did. Your body isn't a zero-sum game. Okay, the second school uh, of thought takes a much more intuitive faith in nature perspective. It acknowledges that the human body is incredibly resilient and adaptive. Throughout history, people have thrived, even during times of famine or nutrient scarcity, uh, that the body has been engineered to do very well. In fact, you can live much longer if you're experiencing nutrient scarcity because it comes when it comes to human function, less can definitely be more. Take the Okinawan women, for example, who are among the longest lived and healthiest populations in the world. Two brothers, the Wilcox brothers, one a geriatrician and researcher, the other a medical anthropologist specializing in lifestyle. They collaborated to study the extraordinary health and longevity of the Okinawan people in this study that started in 1975, and they have written books about it as well. Interestingly, studies have shown that the diets of the longest lived Okinawans were deficient in several nutrients, according to RDA, Recommended Daily Allowance standards. And this is from their Okinawan studies. One of their studies looks like there are a dozen nutrients where Okinawan diet was deficient in. And there were even symptoms in the population of these deficiencies, such as dry skin and some other not too significant or minor health issues. Yet these women lived vibrant, disease-free lives well into old age, remaining active and independent. At the time of this study, they were determined to be the longest living people on earth. And yet they didn't eat a perfect diet. They ate a diet that was considered deficient in a number of nutrients. So it seems that he who gets the most excellent nutrition wins. Well, that's not true. It suggests that the person who gets adequate nutrition, more or less, and may not get what's considered, you know, ideal or enough, that's who wins. This view suggests that Basic adequate nutrition is enough and that chasing some doctor pushing their supplements or their definition of perfection is not only unnecessary, it could be counterproductive. Over supplementation, obsessive micromanagement of nutrients, getting enough of this and enough of that and reliance on industry backed magic formulas can create stress and confusion, which might ironically harm health more than it helps it. There's a less known uh, thing that happens in your body called nutrient recycling. Nutrient recycling is one of the body's ingenious mechanisms for conserving and reusing vital resources. It refers to the process where the body conserves, repurposes, reutilizes nutrients and cellular components to maintain homeostasis, especially under conditions of stress or limited nutrient availability. 
research on processes like autophagy, uh, amino acid recycling, and urea nitrogen salvage. These provide excellent examples of nutrient recycling. I'm going to provide links to a half dozen studies or more in the description if you want to read more about this and the mechanisms involved. But again, this is the process by which your body repurposes certain nutrients to maintain balance and function without requiring a constant excessive influx from the diet. The, this recycling ability explains why you don't need to consume massive amounts of the most nutrients every day as the body is designed to be efficient, especially as I said, in conditions where nutrient intake might be limited. Now how it works, Iron and red blood cells, the body is excellent at recycling iron. When red blood cells break down, their iron content is recovered and reused to produce new red blood cells. And this minimizes the need for large dietary iron intake, unless there's blood loss or a deficiency. Amino acids, the body can break down proteins into amino acids and reuse them for building new proteins. This is part of why protein needs can be met with modest intake if you're consuming a healthy plant-based diet. Vitamin D, the body stores vitamin D in fat tissues and releases it as needed, reducing the requirement for constant dietary intake, especially if you have adequate sun exposure. Now, there's some uh, nutrients, however, that cannot be stored or recycled effectively, meaning you need to regularly obtain them through diet or supplements. Vitamin B12 is the one everybody knows about. The body doesn't produce it. Well, we can store it for years in the liver. Depletion can occur. So plant-based eaters, vitamin B12 supplementation is essential. Vitamin C, this is a water-soluble vitamin. It's not stored in significant amounts, so you must replenish it regularly through eating fruits and vegetables. Essential fatty acids, your body can efficiently convert ALA to EPA and DHA in the amounts that you need. The only thing that might interfere is if you're eating a higher fat diet or a junk food diet where you're getting too much omega-6s as you're found in like peanut butter or nuts, you know, that are rich in omega-6. So that's why you're looking to keep fat intake on the lower end to avoid such issues. So again, understanding nutrient recycling highlights the body's efficiency and resilience it shows that you don't need to obsess over constant perfect nutrient intake just meet basic needs with a healthy diet at the same time knowing which nutrients aren't recycled well like b12 allows you to take simple steps to ensure long-term health without any overcomplication. the balance is you know, trusting the body while giving it what it specifically needs, that's a key to longevity and well-being. That's what I've seen. If you're worrying about needing to keep up with the latest nutrition information from the expert of the day, which often tends to be someone who doesn't actually treat patients, who has no experience in clinical medicine, like my friend Michael Greger, what he teaches is what he reads in a study, but it's not actually working. He's not actually working with people over time, like someone like Dr. McDougal did, or Ornish, or Esselstyn, or the Pritikin Clinic does. You don't need to worry about the nutrient perfection freaks. Instead of treating uh, nutrition like a zero-sum game, my own perspective emphasizes simplicity. Eat whole plant-based foods. Make starches your foundation, potatoes, brown or white rice, oatmeal, and so on. Avoid or minimize eating foods that have a label on them unless they're minimally processed and only contain one or a very few ingredients. Focus on the calorie density of the foods you eat, not the nutrient density. That automatically translates to eating less rich food. That means keeping fats low. Fats like oils, nuts, avocados, and so on. Fats are nine calories per gram, whereas carbs and protein are four calories. A lot of fat in your bloodstream can promote hypoxia. This is a condition where cells are deprived of adequate oxygen. Local tissue hypoxia can cause mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, reduced blood flow, impaired vascular function, sleep apnea, even insulin resistance. Keep your fat intake low. Trust your body's ability to adapt and thrive when given adequate but not obsessive care. Then focus on being lean, getting sunshine, regular exercise, quality sleep, work on having satisfying, meaningful personal relationships. When you focus on these fundamentals, you realize that good health is not about winning some imaginary nutrient war. It's about living a joyful, low-stressed life filled with wholesome plant-based foods. The true victory lies in simplicity and sustainability, providing your body with what it needs and trusting it to handle the rest. Now, while diet is fundamental, there are a few other factors worth considering for optimal health. Just as we keep our diet simple and clean, the same principle applies to our environment. So I say switch to glass containers instead of plastic for cooking and storage and of, to avoid BPAs and to avoid the other chemicals they use in BPA-free plastics. You don't want any of that. 
Filter your tap water to remove common pollutants. Choose natural cleaning and personal care products or choose none. Keep your cell phone away from your body when possible. Be aware of potential issues with Wi-Fi and cell tower exposure. But here's what I think is really important. I want to emphasize this. If you're following a starch-based, low-fat, plant-based diet, you don't need to worry about protein, calcium, or most other nutrients. The pioneers of plant-based nutrition like Pritikin, Dr. McDougall, they established these principles decades ago, and they haven't changed. I have videos from Dr. McDougall on my channel from 25 or 30 years ago that are just as accurate and valuable today as they were when he made them back then. So think about it. The fundamentals of healthy eating, they haven't changed. When someone tells you that they have you know, breaking news about nutrition or they have the latest research, ask yourself, are they trying to sell you something? Are they just you know, making simple truths seem more complicated? Are they touting studies from food and supplement companies? The bottom line is beautifully simple. You don't need to be a nutrition expert. You don't need complex rules. You don't need to chase the latest trends. What works best is what's always worked. Whole plant foods, mostly starches, keeping it simple and sustainable. Trust your body's wisdom. And remember, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. All right, that's it for today. Thanks. Check out some other videos on my channel. We have lots of classic talks and they can give you everything you need to be the healthiest version of you. The fact that the talks are from 5 or 10 or 20 years ago doesn't mean they aren't still the best resources on diet and health. They are. All right, please give this video a like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.